Hooke's law is the law of elasticity, the law that describes how an elastic thing, for example, a stretchy spring that I have right here, wants to restore the position. If I stretch this spring, it wants to restore uh, its rest position, its equilibrium position. And so if I uh, look at the board and look at what Hooke's law looks like is the force or Hooke's force, the force of elasticity is minus kx. Minus means that it's a restorative force, it's a restoring force. K is the uh, spring constant, which is characteristic of this or any other spring, and each spring has its own uh, spring constant, and x is the displacement. So what this law says is that the force and the displacement are directly proportional to each other, and they vary together. So let's see the displacement if I put Actually, let me record the rest position and call this zero. Then let's place a mass of one kilogram. You can see that this is one kilogram. And if I stretch with this one kilogram, this particular spring, it gets stretched by this amount. And I'm gonna mark that as one for one kilogram and two for two kilograms. That looks very similar, doesn't it? The difference in position between zero and one and between one and two are very similar, and also similar to the one that we got with three kilograms here. So I keep on going, four kilograms, five, I'm gonna let it stop bobbing. I'm gonna write it later, six, take the measurement and write the number later. I'm gonna let it rest a little, rotate please. Okay, that's six. Stop bobbing, rotate a little, and that's seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. I have twelve, so that's eleven. And stop bobbing. And finally 12, it's almost stretched all the way to the bottom. So this is 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5. As you can see, this is a linear law, which is exactly what uh, the formula predicted. And the proportionality of the force to the displacement is described on the board and is through the spring constant k. If I want to calculate what k is, I'm going to refer to the board again, see that the force acting on these masses is actually the force of gravity, not only the Hooke's force, the elasticity force uh, given by the spring that's actually stretching it up and down, but uh, the force of gravity that obviously acts on these masses, so one, two, three, and so on kilograms. So if m is the mass and g is the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per square uh, second, the force of gravity is mass by acceleration of gravity. So in the calculation for k, the spring constant, I'm going to neglect the minus sign, flip around this formula and say that k equals f over x. Neglect the minus sign, for f use mg, and so I have the k equal mg over x. m varies from 1 to 12 kilograms, multiply by the acceleration of gravity, and x, or rather the displacement, uh, varies between 1 times x and 12 times x. So let's measure what 12 times x is. And so if I start from 12 down here, 
and go up to zero, I get a measurement that's precisely 43 and a half centimeters that I've written here on the board ahead of time. So 12 times x is 43.5 centimeters. That is 0 0.435 meters. Therefore, x is that number divided by 12, which is 0 0.036 meters. I plug that number in here and so what I get is 1 through 12 multiplied by the acceleration of gravity, 1 through 12 multiplied by x, which is this number I just calculated, and then there's another really useful simplification. So you see that 1 kilogram by 1 meter divided by a square second is called one newton that's the unit of force so simply 9.8 divided by 0.036 gives 272 newtons per meter this is the value for the spring constant for this particular spring thank you